Let's go ahead and show how banks play a role in the creation of money. How do banks lend money, which then creates more spendable assets in an economy? Up here you can see we have the framework set. We have four different banks. We're going to show that if we deposit something into bank A, how it gets multiplied through the system. We're starting to develop that money multiplier. In this case, it's going to be the simple deposit multiplier because we're going to look at the maximum amount. If we assume that the required reserve ratio is 10% and that banks are only holding the required reserves, not holding any excess reserves, and all the money that's put out into the economy gets deposited back into a bank, we will see the maximum amount that money supply can grow. So let's go ahead and look at that. Let's say that there's a $100 initial deposit into bank A. So let's do that. $100 goes into bank A. That bank is going to have to do something with that $100. If we're assuming that they're only holding the required reserves, 10% of that's gonna go into reserves, which would be 10. And then they're gonna lend the rest of it out, which is 90. What's the spendable money? What is that money supply? Well, at this point in time, money supply is going to equal to $190. Because I could spend out of my deposits and the person who got that loan could spend out of that money. So we have 100 plus the 90 is going to get us to that 190. Now remember, we're making the decision right now that we're gonna show the maximum amount. Because there's a possibility that the person who takes that $90 loan out just holds onto that money and never does anything with it. The multiplying process in the money system would end at that point. That's why we look at the simple deposit multiplier, which is the maximum amount, when we assume that this $90 is going to get deposited. For this example, let's say it gets deposited in a different bank, Bank B. So this goes over here, we have $90 deposited into Bank B. Well, what does Bank B do with that? They hold 10%. Reserves of $9, and they're able to lend out 81. What's the money supply after this step? Well, remember the money supply, the spendable deposits, have to be all the deposits that are there. So we know it's gotta be this deposit, and this deposit, and then anything that's been recently created that could be spent, which would be this loan. Notice it's not this loan because this loan has become the deposit. So we're only looking at deposits and the currency, the spendable money, that's out in society. So in this case, we would have 190 plus 81, which is 271. That means there's 271 dollars worth of assets that you could spend in the society right now at this given time. And that's just from an initial deposit of 100. So then what happens? We can do this again. This $81 gets deposited down here, which means that we're going to have $8.10 kept as a reserve. And the $72.90 is what's left over to lend out same process of thinking when we want to find the money supply then. This money supply is going to be all the deposits that could be spent. So we have, again, this deposit, this deposit, this deposit, and the loans that are going out now. We add all three of those things up and we get $343.90. Again, we see the money supply growing because of this initial deposit. Now, if at any point the bank were to not make a loan or an individual were not to deposit it, then this process would stop. That's why what we're figuring out right here is the simple deposit multiplier, which is the maximum amount that money supply can grow. Let's see another one again, just to keep this going. So if we deposit that $72.90, that means $7.29 because it's 10% must get held on reserves. And the rest of it, which is $65.61, ends up being a loan.
So again, one more time, what is that money supply? That money supply is going to be all of the deposits plus that money that's out there. This is 409.51. And we can keep doing this process on and on and on. What we notice if we were to do this on and on and on and on until we finally run out of money in the system, this would have increased by 10 times. The way we would figure that out is through some algebra talking about sequences and expansions. Now we don't need that for this class. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna give you the equation for the simple deposit multiplier. So that money multiplier equation is going to be one divided by RR. In this case, it's one over 10%, which is 10. And you can visit your textbook or search online if you're really interested in the math behind that. What I need you to understand is the process of what is happening. Understand that your money supply is always deposits and currency. That's my M1 that we've talked about. And that your money multiplier, your simple deposit multiplier, in this class is equal to 1 divided by the required reserve ratio.